In this video, let's talk about wrong way risk. Let's begin with a simple motivating example. Let's say there is a US based investor who has bought emerging market sovereign bonds. Okay, these are bonds whose payouts will be denominated in the local currency of this emerging market and let this local currency be denoted by LC. Okay. Let our US investor not be very comfortable with the foreign exchange risk exposure that investing in these bonds brings forth. Okay, so our US based investor wants to now enter into a cross currency swap so that the investor is able to change the nature of this asset and make it instead a USD denominated asset. Okay, so our US based investor enters into a cross currency swap. This swap is done with a local bank which is domiciled in the same emerging market and in this cross currency swap our US investor will be paying the local currency and will be receiving USD. Okay, now think of a situation where the country which was the issuer of these bonds were to go, let's say, under some sort of distress. Okay, if our country were to go under some sort of distress, what will happen to the currency of this country? There's a high chance that this currency, which is LC, will be devalued. Okay, if LC were to lose value and hence become a weaker currency, what happens then to the value of this cross currency swap? Okay, what happens to the MTM, the mark to market value of this cross currency swap? If LC were to be devalued because our US investor is paying LC and receiving USD, that means our investor is paying the weaker currency and is receiving the now stronger currency, the MTM value of this cross currency swap from our US investor's perspective becomes positive. Okay, our US investor gains on this cross currency swap when this LC were to be devalued. Okay, now if this country were to undergo a period of distress, right, the bank which our US investor has transacted with, this local bank, because this bank is domiciled in the same country, the parent country undergoing some sort of distress will not leave this local bank unharmed. Okay, the economy of this country will be affected and so will the local bank which is domiciled in this country. Okay, the credit health therefore of this local bank goes down and you can say that the probability of default of this local bank goes up. Okay, so what are we observing here? We are observing that when LC goes down, two things happen. The MTM value of this trade from this investor's perspective goes up, which means that the exposure that this investor has to this counterparty goes up and simultaneously the probability of default of this counterparty also goes up. Okay, so exposure goes up and probability of default goes up. So, in this situation, we are seeing a positive dependence between exposure and probability of default. Now, why are we concerned about this positive dependence between exposure and probability of default? Well, there is reason to be concerned because usually speaking, when we model counterparty credit risk, we assume that exposure and probability of default, okay, inputs which go into the modeling of counterparty credit risk, these inputs are independent, okay. So, if indeed we have a situation where exposure and probability of default have a positive dependence between them, that situation is called wrong way risk situation.
Okay? You can say that wrong way risk exists when there is a positive dependence between exposure and probability of default. Equivalently, you can say that wrong way risk exists when there is a negative dependence between exposure and credit health. Okay, which means that whenever exposure goes up, credit health goes down. Okay, these are two equivalent ways of expressing the definition of wrong way risk. Okay, if this was about positive dependence between exposure and probability of default, what about if there is a negative dependence? A situation where you have negative dependence between exposure and probability of default is called a right way risk situation. Okay. Now, as a takeaway of this video, which was about a very quick introduction to wrong way risk, one has to remember this, that wrong way risk becomes worrisome for a modeler of counterparty credit risk because if you were to ignore wrong way risk, if you were to ignore the positive dependence between exposure and probability of default, you will end up underestimating measures such as CVA, credit valuation adjustment. Okay, If your true situation is a wrong way risk situation and you assume that exposure and probability of default are independent of each other, you will be underestimating your CVA. Okay, This video was a quick look at this risk called wrong way risk.